and my golf ball, I want to share with you an interview that I did with one of the best sports psychologists in the game, and I know he is one busy character this week at the U.S. Open. Enjoy this interview with Dr. Brett McKay. All right, we're back here, Players' Championship, joined by one of the coaches now on the 18 birdies platform, Dr. Brett McCabe. Hey there. Thank you so much for being here. You are a busy man. How many players you got now? I mean, good grief. About 10. 10 players? Got four, five this week. So, busy. 10, 10 on 10. the PGA Tour. Be on the, 10 on the PGA we Tour. We won't get into all these other, no. other tours and whatnot. Yeah. So well, some coming. How am I doing? How, no, how you feel about these lesson plans you put together? I love them. Yeah. Um, I think for any given player, whether you're an elite player or a bogey player, um, the lesson plans are, we, I took a look at the mental game from a different perspective. Okay. And the perspective that I wanted players to understand is how to maximize their game without getting into the traditional, stereotypical mental game stuff. The mental game is oftentimes many, many things just about, you know, go into a process, visualize a shot, but it's so much deeper than that. And it's so much simpler than that. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a construct. What I want players to understand is that they understand who they are as a player and they understand what makes them successful, then they can build a platform to help them achieve the success they want. Okay. And that's what's worked for my players on tour. It's been very simple, but it's been demonstrated results over and over and over again. And look for that. These lesson plans by this guy right here, just what he talked about, is coming on the 18 birdie platform very, very soon. I want to talk about a couple of players here sure. that when I look at them over the last couple of years, have really improved. And I want to start with the lefty, Brian Harmon. Share with our viewers one thing from your eyes that Brian has really improved upon in the mental side in the last couple of years. Because technically, I look at him, it looks the same, right? Technically, he's swinging yeah. the golf course. And I know there's been incremental gains, but mentally, he's taken some good strides. Well, one of the things for when you have a player like a Brian Harmon or a player who's so talented, and wants to see the success is that you have to get them to believe that they're good is good enough. And so many players are on a platform of this time next year, I'm on this major redo and I'm going to fix all these problems versus going, you know what, what I have is good enough. And if my 95% can beat other players, that extra 5% is going to come from self-belief. Mm. You know, when players talk about trusting a process, that's great. Trust a process. But there's a whole nother component about the competitive mindset that they believe in themselves. And if you, if you can believe in what you have versus chasing something you don't have, you'll always be successful. If somebody like Brian is just getting himself in position without having to do more than he needs to do. I like this golf course for him. Oh, yeah. I like any golf course for him. Yeah, I think There's not is... a golf course that Brian Harmon can't compete on. Mm -hmm. Sneaky long. Yeah, much longer than people think. Yeah. And probably the best short game on tour. Oh, or one wow. of the best, because yeah. I'd argue with some other guys, too. I, I think this is, uh, this is a spot for him. I, yeah. I could see him. I would not be surprised if he won the Players' He's had success here before. Yeah. Let's go to another one, and, and we could we could talk for yeah. the rest of the day on your players. But Pat Gazar, yeah, I mean, here's a guy that's won twice this year, mm -hmm. right? He's third in the FedEx yep. Cup right now. I mean, big games. Yeah, Patton's a, another one that's just been so talented, and his pathway's been different. He wasn't somebody who made it out on the PGA Tour at 22. He learned who he was, and he's trusted that. And so what you get to see from players like Patton is that Patton had early success, took down Ricky Fowler at Mayakoba, yep. then went to Sony and survived a six-hole playoff where – what was so beautiful about it is on his first playoff hole, he dunked a, a wedge shot into the bunker. Mm. Um, greenside, where he thought he had an advantage, had to get it up and down from a bunker to extend the playoff, and he did, and then he went on to win. So a player like Patton has all the tools in the world. What it is is just not trying to be something you're not. Mm. Players, you know, if you hit a draw, mm. hit a draw. If you hit a, a cut, hit a cut. If you need to hit a seven iron off the greens to get it up and down, you don't have to hit a sandwich. Do what it takes to get the ball in the hole. Let's yeah. not overcomplicate. Those model swings sell videos, and they sell shirts. Yep. They don't sell scores. And you got to find what sells your score. Let's talk John Rahm yeah. for a minute, because I know you've worked with, mm -hmm. with John as well. I mean, to me, I look at John Rahm. I mean, he's, he's obviously he's a powerful player. He's a good ball striker. The kid can putt. He looks, I don't know John, but he seems mentally tough to me. Oh, yeah. Right? He, he looks like he's ready to get in. He's ready to mix it up. Is that pretty yeah. accurate? And John is, John's got a history with, you know, learning and I won't say self-taught, but he understands his own game very, very well. He knows who he is. He's an elite competitor mm. and somebody who has a tremendous amount of passion for what he does. So he's going to compete. And what I love about players is finding that competitive mindset deep within and understanding that great competitors don't have to have the results. They understand that vulnerability has got to be in there. And so success and failure is always on the table. Mm. But you've got to be willing to fail in order to succeed. And if we're not going to worry about failure, then let's go succeed. We can want it really bad, but we got to fight for it. Last question. Yeah. Right. For our viewers at home, 
dealing with failure yeah. on the golf course, if you had to give them one, maybe two things to accept failure and deal with it and build upon that? Well, failure, I came from the baseball world. Okay. Baseball is a game of failure, but so is golf. In a, I had a guy on the web tour shoot 58 and I asked him how many great shots did he hit? And he said, maybe 10. So it's about managing your bad shots and being able to keep it. What happens is players hit bad shots and it automatically triggers this down the road mentality of like, oh my God, if I hit that shot on 14, I'm in trouble. Mm. Or all this work I've done is so bad mm. and I've lost all the success I've had. Look, you're gonna fail. Be the best at managing your failures by moving forward and keep going. Where Good. people get in trouble is they start allowing it to mean something more than just a bad shot. Wow, listen to this, one of the best in the business, 10 deep now on the PGA Tour. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you liked it. And remember, leave a comment if you have any questions. And most importantly, subscribe right here to Travis Fulton Golf so I can help you with your game long term.